And now it's time to try to classify a FASTQ dataset coming from the sequencer with, uh, with a tool. We have different possibilities when it comes to uh, software tools. And, well, each software has its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, for example, uh, we have Kraken that is based on uh, exit keymers, uh, in particular 31 MERS, um, that try to mix the maximum use of all the available genomic sequences. Um, at the same time, there is Metaflan 2 that uses taxon-specific markers. Uh, there is Phytosif that, on the other hand, we use uh, universal proteins and RNA. And finally, there is Megan that is uh, using BLAST bit score uh, to assign each alignment to the uh, lowest common ancestor uh, of a sequence. So it's good to have, have an idea of, the, of what is on the shelf. Today, we are going to focus on Kraken because uh, this software has been designed with the speed in mind. So it's fast enough to be able to perform a live demo uh, of Kraken also with uh, uh, more than one data set. It is always a good idea to have some toy files to test our analysis tools. And since we want to test different levels of analysis, uh, it's good to have uh, different toy data sets. A first level is a simulated data set. This paper, for example, introduces a simulated metagenome that we can use to check the sensitivity and specificity of our methods. It's ma made uh, using a set of genomes from the database, uh, deciding for each uh, an abundance level and then simulating the shotgun. This uh, table from the supplementary material, uh, it's useful to remember that the genome size makes uh, a big difference, so bigger genomes are more represented. So at the end, the percentage that we see in the uh, classification charts, they make sense in a relative term. So if we compare multiple samples, we can see an increase or decrease of some species, but we cannot really tell which species is more abundant within the same sample. Another interesting control are the so-called mock communities. This paper introduces a mock community with 23 bacterial strains and 3 archaea, all chosen because they have a finished genome. This bar plot shows the expected composition of the mix based on the molarity of each genome. Look at the red bars representing the molarity. And the observed composition, based on the number of sequencing reads mapped on each reference genome. In this case, the authors did sequence the mock community, both with the Lumina and PacBio, that's why we have two bars. And it's also nice to, to see that there is a platform bias. All metagenomic papers come with accession number to public repositories, so we can download the raw data and replicate their analysis. Uh, this paper, for example, compared the environmental metagenome for different sites in oil fields in Alaska. Environmental samples are interesting because they are usually rich in novel species. Last, a data set that we are going to use now. It's a study from Mark's group where they detected the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis in sputum samples. Here, the commands that we are going to use. As usual, we can log in into our machine and we mention several datasets. Where we can find those datasets? They are all in the slash data directory. In particular, we have MT for mycobacterium tuberculosis, mock containing the two mock community, the simulated one and the real one. And finally, metagenomics uh, contains the environmental samples. So let's start having a look at uh, the content of the MT directory. So there is a subdirectory called reads, very good. So here we have four samples from the study mentioned by uh, Mark's group. Uh, and thus eight files since we have paired end reads. Now uh, we can start uh, classificating one of these. So I can create a directory for Kraken MT, for example. Now we have the place where to store some of our outputs. And so let's start with Kraken minus threads for to use for processor minus minus paired to specify that we are using pair dense, and then data, mt, reads. Let's classify this 
as first. So I specify first the one parent and then data empty reads and the second. Now we have to redirect the output somewhere. We created just now a new directory, Kraken MT, and so we can use the same code name from the repository and just Kraken, for example, just a, an extension that we can use to, to remember what we did. Now we are seeing something. This is strange because we asked the shell to redirect the output within a file. And so this is a, a reminder that indeed we have two different independent channels in the shell. One is called standard output, and with the greater down, we are redirecting the standard output inside a new file. But there is also a second channel called standard error that is not only for errors, it's also for information. In this case, uh, we are going to receive a, a small feedback about the number of classified sequences and the unclassified. Uh, the number of classified sequences is quite low in this case, but it's also good to keep it in mind that we could have contaminants, we could screen for uh, species that are not present in our database. Uh, so it depends on the setup of the, of the system. Now, I will classify all of the data sets. Now, let's have a look at the, at the file created. So I enter the Kraken MT directory. We have all these files, one per sample. With less, we can have a look at the raw output from Kraken that, as I mentioned, is not usually what we are interested in. So, this is a multi-column table. Uh, there is one um, line per read. The first column is either U for unclassified or C for classified. Then we have the read name. And the last codes are uh, a summary of the keymers found. For example, I stands for unassigned, there are 31 unassigned keymers uh, and there is one keymer assigned to uh, the taxon 487. So at the end the classification is 187. So as I mentioned these codes makes no sense for humans so we can use if we want to see a uh, read by read classification that again is not something that we usually do we can use the Kraken translate program that takes as input the output of Kraken and a nice label. So I will add arbitrarily a txt extension. Let's have a look at the created file. So now we see that for each read we have the uh, full classification. And since we know how to use less, we can have a small look at mycobacterium, for example. Yes, found. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Well, at least one read match the target organism. What we want to have now is an aggregated report, as I mentioned before. So Kraken report, the input is the same, so the raw output from Kraken Again, let's use an arbitrary name just to differentiate them. Let's have a look at the report that we created now. Oh, well, this is, is getting more interesting. So here we have the percentage. So 60% uh, of the reads was not classified. There are several reasons for this. We should remember that we are using a compact database with uh, uh, a limited number of species. Second, uh, when there is uh, uh, some contaminants, in this case could be uh, human, uh, those reads will not be classified. Well, again, the investigation on the unclassified reads is dependent on the source of the reads. So for this, in this moment, we are not interested in this because we are using Kraken to detect the presence of something. So uh, this column represents the rank. So this is the domain, this is the film, class, order, genus, and species. And again, we can have a look at the presence of um, mycobacterium. Yes, we found it. Uh, the percentage is not as small. Remember that we are underestimating because not all the keymers 
uh, from a genome are uh, specific for the lower taxon. So some reads uh, from mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, will be classified as mycobacteriaceae uh, generally or uh, with the upper levels. This is something that is very normal with Kraken. But uh, if we want to know the, to see the presence of something, we are there. And as I mentioned, uh, what is useful sometimes is to compare different samples. So let's use the final tool, Kraken MPA report. We got a header line, and for this uh, program, we are going to use all the Kraken files, creating a report.tsv for tab separated values that will represent basically um, the abundance of each taxa uh, in each sample. So it's a matrix basically. Okay, our first problem is that when we look at the table uh, from the shell, uh, the columns are not very nicely aligned because of the presence of longer taxa uh, in the first place. We can deal with uh, specific tools uh, and overcome the problem, but again, let's have a look directly at tuberculosis. Okay, again, we found it. What I wanted to highlight is that Apparently, one sample has a higher abundance of mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, if compared with the others. This is what we are interested in. So, let's have a look at which sample is this. It was the second, that is this one. Well, from the paper, we can check if our prediction matches the uh, analysis made by uh, Pollen Group. So, if we look at their table, there is one strain, one sample, that got uh, a much higher number of bases aligning against the reference genome of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, that is K2. If we look at the conversion table, sample K2 is indeed the one ending by 8-9. Uh, this is something quite annoying with data banks, but makes uh, uh, things much more clear. So this sample is indeed the one with uh, uh, more reads mapped on tuberculosis. So uh, our first simple analysis with Kraken was able to reproduce a small result from a complex paper. Now it's your turn to try 